Homo erectus-like creatures battled giant hyenas for prey over two million years ago on the African savanna. Now new research suggests that hyenas and Neanderthals also competed for prey in Europe for hundreds of thousands of years. Some Neanderthals apparently even fell victim to packs of ravenous hyenas, their bones being crushed by the powerful jaws of these Stone Age beasts. The discovery of a Neanderthal skull in Guattari Cave near Rome garnered international attention in 1939, and the paleontologist who studied the skull at the time claimed that the large hole in its temple was caused by ritual cannibalism. However, there was something strange about the collection of Neanderthal fossils discovered at the cave. There were plenty of skulls, but very few post-cranial remains. So, where were the bodies? Paleoanthropologists once described ancient human lives as nasty, brutish and short, and the heavy brows and robust bones of hominins such as Neanderthals attested to the harsh, primitive conditions in which they lived. With such a bleak view of the past, the horrifying act of cannibalism fit perfectly with what scientists discovered in Italy. The majority of Neanderthal fossils from the cave were recently studied by a team of scientists. They were exactly what paleoanthropologists had been looking for, but the scarcity of the Neanderthal body parts was perplexing. The idea of the murderous and bloodthirsty Neanderthals has faded from view, but the mystery of why the cave primarily contained only skull fragments has remained. Perhaps there was a cave roof collapse that shattered the bodies, but even this theory was not entirely satisfactory. But how about hyenas? The idea that the cave was a hyena den populated by the enormous extinct hyena species Pachycrocuta had seemingly been forgotten, but in a new paper researchers argue that the cave was inhabited by giant hyenas that tore hapless Neanderthals limb from limb. Archaeologists surveying the cave recently made a spectacular discovery. The fossilized remains of nine more Neanderthals. One of the victims lived 90,000 to 100,000 years ago, while the rest lived between 50,000 and 68,000 years ago. The new discovery establishes the location as one of the most significant places in the world for the history of Neanderthals. Stone Age cave hyenas used the cave as a den and most likely hunted Neanderthals as prey, just as they had for hundreds of thousands of years. Hyenas hunted the Neanderthals, particularly the most vulnerable, such as sick or elderly people. The newly discovered Neanderthal remains belonged to a woman, seven men, and a young boy. The archaeological team surveying the cave also discovered the fossilized remains of hyenas, rhinoceroses, giant deer, and wild horses. A collapse, possibly caused by an earthquake, sealed this cave for over 60,000 years, thus preserving the remains found inside for tens of thousands of years. But new research suggests that the damage was most likely caused by hyenas. It's unusual to find so many Neanderthal remains in the same location. The fact that hyenas were able to ensnare this group suggests that the region around Rome had a significant Neanderthal population. Indeed, it appears that the hyenas had a taste for Neanderthal meat. It is unclear whether the giant hyenas killed the Neanderthals or simply ate the humans' remains after they died from natural causes. According to the researchers, Neanderthals may have lived in the cave before the hyenas took over. The scholars discovered burned bones, carved stones, and bones with cut marks, indicating hunting and butchery. As stated, this is a spectacular find. It made sense that early humans would live in caves, but what had happened to skew the fossil record in favor of only skulls and teeth? The fossilized remains of over several Neanderthals were discovered in the cave sites, possibly having been cannibalized by another tribe, or an even more advanced type of human researchers previously speculated. Paleoanthropologists cited damage to hominin fossils as evidence, claiming that it could only have been caused by tool-wielding killers. This made sense of the preponderance of skulls and teeth, as the researchers explained in a presentation of their case decades ago. The Neanderthal remains must have been brought into the cave as parts already severed from the body. Perhaps they were trophies, or more likely, the hunting spoils of headhunters. Nonetheless, other archaeological workers on the same site disagreed. They mistook the location for a hyena habitat, rather than a headhunting hotspot. 
Indeed, some investigators later became more skeptical of earlier conclusions, claiming that at least some of the damage could have been caused by carnivores. But the concept of bloodthirsty ape men was widely accepted, even though it was scientifically questioned at the time. However, not only a giant hyena remains discovered in the cave, but the damage to the Neanderthal bones and other fossils is consistent with what is seen in modern hyena dens. Limb bones, for example, are scarce and represented primarily by shafts with the ends broken or gnawed off. Thus, postcranial remains are rare because giant hyenas obliterated them by tearing apart the carcasses and cracking open the bones, and some of the bones were even swallowed, as evidenced by rare acid-etched fragments with tooth marks. Given the destructive power of these giant hyenas, one might expect Neanderthal skulls to be cracked into splinters as well, but a hominin head contains very little meat. The main fleshy parts of a head are the jaw muscles, tongue and brain, which hyenas particularly enjoy. Given what is known about modern hyena eating habits and the damage to Neanderthal skulls, researchers were able to reconstruct what happened to the poor hominins. The first step might have been removing the large jaw muscles from the face. After this, there would be little worth eating on the outside of the skull, so the hyenas most likely broke off the lower jaw and ate the tongue. By this point, the hominin's face would have sustained catastrophic damage, which explains why so many Neanderthals from the site are missing their faces. In fact, the large brain of Neanderthals would have been a lipid-rich treat that the hyenas would have undoubtedly sought. To accomplish this, it appears that the hyenas bit down on the skull and pressed, using it as a kind of fulcrum until a large enough hole was broken open to extract the brain. At this point, there would be nothing left on the skull that was edible, and the remaining skull fragments would litter the cave floor. Given the hyena's violent skull processing, it's surprising that any skull material was collected for Neanderthals at all. Thus, the ancient hominins we once thought of as our proud, if cannibalistic cousins, were actually food refuse for giant hyenas. It's unclear how so many of these ancient humans fell prey to hyenas over thousands of years, but the cave could have served as a natural trap. The hyenas would simply have to wait for a hominin to fall or injure itself before eating at their leisure. The presence of scorched bones and tools suggests that Neanderthals also once lived in the cave, but for the majority of its history it appears to have been a hyena den. Nonetheless, Neanderthals living near what is now Madrid may have worn hyena pelts to keep warm in the cold Iberian mountains. Until now, it was widely assumed that extinct hominids primarily wore the skins of herbivorous mammals such as deer or bovines. But new research suggests that the Neanderthal wardrobe may have included the furs of dangerous carnivores, including giant hyenas, cave bears and giant cats. The Naval Mayo Rock Shelter, identified as a Neanderthal hunting camp, provides evidence of this risky prehistoric fashion. Researchers discovered the remains of numerous plant-eating animals in a layer of soil previously dated to between 66,000 and 83,000 years ago, indicating that the site's archaic human occupants butchered and skinned the animals. Researchers also discovered a hyena paw bone with markings that may have been made by Neanderthal tools, but could also have been caused by biting or trampling by other animals. To determine how these marks were created, the authors of a new study used an artificial intelligence algorithm capable of distinguishing between man-made bone modifications and those caused by non-anthropogenic factors. The algorithm identified all of the marks as cut marks, write the researchers, indicating that the bones were processed using Neanderthal stone tools. More specifically, they discovered that the marks on the recovered hyena phalanx can be related to the animal's skinning activity due to their position and orientation. The bone does not appear to have been cracked open to access the marrow, indicating that the hyena was only used for its pelt and not eaten by the Neanderthals. According to the study's authors, hyena fur may have been sought out due to the icy conditions at the hunting camp which is 3,600 feet above sea level. This site is located in an area where the use of fire in conjunction with skins as clothing or bed covers may have been critical for survival, according to the researchers. Until recently, there was little archaeological evidence that Neanderthals used carnivorous animals for food or clothing, 
but another study revealed that ancient humans hunted cave lions in Germany. There are three other examples of hyena remains discovered at Neanderthal sites, but this is the first to indicate that the animal was used solely for its pelt. Hyena bones, discovered at another Neanderthal cave in Spain, for example, appear to have been butchered for meat. Meanwhile, a particularly intriguing discovery in France involving modified hyena bones has been interpreted as a symbolic item, with some scholars proposing that the marks on the bones represent a numerical notation system. In reference to this evidence, the study authors suggest that the use of a carnivore pelt may have symbolic significance in the Neanderthal universe, which is a topic of ongoing debate. Nonetheless, current evidence from the rock shelter does not support this possibility. Thus, it appears that the use of the hyena pelt was primarily opportunistic. By the time that humans of the species Homo sapiens sapiens evolved, the cave hyena of Eurasia had already gone extinct from competition from archaic humans. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, please check out our many other videos on paleoanthropology and leave a like and a comment. We appreciate your support and take care.